So one really great thing that I thought that Paizo did with the remaster is they moved assisted items from Lost Omens Grand Bazaar to Player Core. And so now it is on Player Core, page 293. And the assisted items really help individual players represent themselves, represent any type of characteristic that people would like to put into their characters and really I feel kind of helps representation. So with that, let's go ahead and cover some of the assistive items. In general, what they do is they generally replace individual things that allow a player to play the game, but there are some cases where it might even give you a slight edge and we'll go ahead and talk about that when we get to it. But my name is Don. I'm trying to be the sly strategist and let's go ahead and get into it. So assistive items are now included in player core and they basically are assistive items that allow people to play with a disability without actually changing the mechanics of the game. And it basically works like this. So if you have been disabled from birth or for a significant period of time before kind of going out on your campaign, going out on your adventure, becoming an adventurer, meeting with your friends, whatever is the start of your campaign, then basically you would begin with any basic assistive item that you would have simply as part of your backstory. It isn't like you decide to adventure one day and all of a sudden you get things, but this would be something you have just because you've lived your life. They will not count against your starting money. And they also really won't have any value when they're sold. However, if you are disabled in a, an adventure, let's say you need a new prosthesis or you need a hearing aid because your eardrums are blown out for some reason, well, then you can go ahead and buy them. And there is a chart on page 293 that will go ahead and give that. And we'll kind of cover that a little bit, but all these things can be used to ensure that you can continue your adventuring career without really affecting the mechanics of the game too much. So I'm not going to go ahead and go over every single one of these items, but I did want to show the chart here. And the chart basically shows you what the items are, how much they would cost, what type of bulk they would have, and how many hands you would need to use them, if that is applicable. And then when you see in the wheelchair and traveler's chair section, there's a C text because there's a whole insert that kind of explains some of the things that go along with a wheelchair. And it's really good. But let's go ahead and cover some of the more basic assistive items. So with a cane, a cane is basically a straight length of wood with a curved handle and shaped like the tip of a hook, as you would kind of think with any cane. It basically has a really simple design that helps you with balance and really is there to assist you with taking weight off the effective opposite leg, typically two to three feet long, and it can be lengthened or shortened as needed. So if you need a cane, it does happen to take one hand. Now we'll go ahead and move on to corrective lenses. So let's say you had a player who wanted to use corrective lenses or like myself who has corrective lenses and wanted that to be applicable in the game. A set of corrective lenses might take the form of eyeglasses or specialized goggles worn over the eyes. You can don or remove your corrective lenses as an interact action. Now, two things here. So this won't really cover anything like magical glasses or things that give you a specific advantage because there are items that do that. So they aren't corrective lenses in that case if they do something particularly special. But one thing that is really interesting is, and you'll find this for hearing it as well, is you can remove your corrective lenses as an interact action. If there was some specific type of visual effect that required maybe something that had to do with words written in the air or written on a wall or something like that, you might be able to remove your corrective lenses in order to not have that particular thing take effect. I'm having a hard time coming up with a specific example, but it'd be an interesting bit of gamesmanship, maybe a little bit of flavor that you could do in order to not have somebody affected by a particular spell effect. It's kind of interesting. The next one we're going to cover is crutches. Crutches come as basically a single or a pair, depending on how much support you need while walking. Fit under your armpit, just as you would normally think, and you use your hand and the swing of your arm to move with them. The next one we're going to talk about, once again, similar to corrective lenses, is the hearing aid. So the hearing aid as it reads here, it's a hearing aid is worn in the ear and is made from carved wood, shaped metal, or even small clockwork pieces. The shape of the device aids those who are hard of hearing and you can wear one or two depending on your hearing loss. You can attach or remove your hearing aids as an interact action. 
So if you had a specific sonic effect, it might work out where you could interact with them, turn them off or remove them and not be affected by the sonic action. Once again, that would generally be up to GM discretion and the like. However, that's just kind of, it's, it's an interesting thing to do. So a magical hearing aid has the magical trait. With its curved shape, it hooks over the top and sits behind your ear with a receiver that fits in the ear opening. The external part of the device detects sound waves and using magic, transfers them down the receiver and into your ear. You can wear one or two depending on your hearing loss and you can turn your hearing aids on or off using an interact action. So same as a basic hearing aid in the fact that you can interact with them in order to turn them on or off, which could be a very interesting mechanic. Now, the next one is a prosthesis. A prosthesis replaces a missing or damaged body part. So whether from birth or happened during encounters or happened as part of your backstory, it would just replace that particular body part. So as it reads here, typical prosthesis include artificial feet, eyes, hands, and limbs, though a basic prosthesis can be designed as a replacement for any body part. And advancements in the prosthetic field mean that even the most basic can provide the full range of functionality for a missing body part. It has a number of belts, cuffs that keep it attached to your body, and you can attach or remove a prosthesis as an interact action. So if it got damaged, if anything happened to do something like that, maybe there was acid and your GM decided that the acid would maybe rust the prosthesis. Well, they could take off the prosthesis if they had a spare or if it was hampering gameplay. Once again, all these can add either just flavor or depending on how you and your party want to play it, they could actually add some interesting mechanics to a game. Then we get to a wheelchair. Now there are two types of wheelchairs. There's a common wheelchair and there is a traveler's wheelchair. So a common wheelchair is ideal for everyday use, but isn't designed for strenuous activity. So this wouldn't be the one that you would take on your adventuring. These are common amongst non-adventurers and they do come in a variety of sizes to suit basically anybody who wants to use one. Now the difference is a traveler's chair. A traveler's chair is tailored for frequent adventures and travels. The design is sleek and fashionable to provide excellent comfort and support. A traveler's chair has small mechanisms, either made from interlocking wood pieces, clockwork, or however you kind of want to do it for flavor that allow the chair to traverse up and down stairs without any additional difficulty so it won't slow you down or require any specific rolls. Now, moving upstairs is still difficult terrain, but that's just the same as it is for any other characters. And move through other common adventuring terrain without any additional difficulty such as ladders and uneven ground. So if you are an adventurer, you generally would have this traveler's wheelchair and maybe you would use a regular wheelchair in an inn if yours was getting repaired or if you needed to get repairs done, you might want to use a regular wheelchair and then when you're adventuring, switch to the traveler's wheelchair. It kind of depends on how you, your GM, and your party want to play it. But the option is there to have full mechanics without having to make anything special in order to incorporate this in the game, which once again, I think is fantastic for representation. So chair storage can be purchased and applied to any wheelchair. You can think of this as any type of storage pouch and it reduces the amount of bulk the items weigh when stored within the chair. So the first two bulk of items stowed in your chair don't count against your bulk limit. And if you use both chair storage and a backpack at the same time, only two bulk total isn't counted against your limit. Much like if you use multiple backpacks or similar items at the same time. So it basically kind of replaces the backpack at that particular time if you're using it as chair storage. Now wheelchairs, once again, have a lot more explanation and they have an insert on page 294 that kind of explains how things work and how you would actually play it in the game, which I do like because it is something that people would have a lot of questions about. So each wheelchair operates in the following ways. Adjustable seat belts, they Belts strap around your waist, knees, and shins to keep you in the chair if it's thrown, knocked, or handled roughly. You can open and release your belts with an interact action. So if you needed to get out of the wheelchair for some reason, you would definitely have an interact action. I like the fact that they tell you what you would need to do. Bulk limit. The wheelchair is strong enough to support you and any amount of bulk you could typically hold or carry. So it doesn't give you extra. It's not like you have a portable semi truck or anything along that side. It just allows you to do what you would typically be able to do. Your total carried bulk includes all the items you are wearing, carrying, and stowed on your wheelchair. 
and you would take the usual effects when there's too much bulk on you in your wheelchair. And if you're carrying an amount of bulk equal to five plus your strength modifier, you're encumbered just like you would normally. And you and your wheelchair can't hold or carry more than 10 plus your strength modifier. The wheelchair's own bulk doesn't count against your bulk limit when riding in the wheelchair. And it's listed in case maybe for some reason you were traveling and you needed to carry the wheelchair separately. Then they even get down to the detail to a frame. A wheelchair is typically made from common materials like wood, but they can also be made from steel, other metals, or even rarer metals like Dawn Silver. You could kind of flavor it however you want. The wheelchairs presented here are made from durable wood. And as far as magic goes, the wheelchair is considered an extension of yourself. So if you have any spells or abilities that are going to change your body, affect your body, something along those lines, they also apply to the chair and it transforms with you so long as you're using it. You can basically use any spell you want and you get to choose how the wheelchair appears in the spell. I think that's fantastic that it's actually written in the manual itself. And for movement, when you're using a wheelchair, you're striding at your normal speed, just like anything else. So it has your ancestry plus your bonuses, penalties, and any adjustments that you would have. You do propel the wheelchair by using your hands on the hand rims, and you can propel the wheelchair even while holding something in your hands because you could just kind of push it along. But if you are restrained or otherwise unable to move your hands freely, then you can't. You're still affected by difficult terrain and other terrain features. And if there was an effect that immobilized you, let's say someone cast vines and held up someone else's legs, well, they would kind of get within your wheels and prevent you from moving. So it is going to give you the same penalty to speeds or similar by entangling or hindering the wheels as would anybody else's legs. And you can use all of your actions while in a wheelchair. So there is nothing that is prevented because you have a wheelchair. And the other thing that they stipulate so that there's no confusion is quick writing. If the chair is tipped or you're knocked prone while in the chair, you can write yourself using the stand action. Though in this case, you're writing the wheelchair instead. So there isn't additional actions. There isn't anything specific you need to do. You would just use the stand action in order to get back in the wheelchair because the wheelchair in the Pathfinder universe is designed to do so. An ally can use an interact action to help write you, allowing you to stand as a free action triggered by their interact. So if someone were to uh, try to assist you to write yourself, well, that would be a free action for you because they spent the interact action. Now, I do love the assistive items section, and I love the fact that they took it out of a Lost Omens book and put it directly in player core. I think it's going to be super helpful for representation. I think it's going to be super helpful in order to let people play the player characters they want to play. Now, I do hope you like this guide, and if you did, feel free to like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell, but whatever you do, I hope you have a great day and happy adventuring. Thanks.